So after lunch, let's start this session. My name is Takeuchi from Hitotsubashi University. I will be serving as the moderator. We have six persons plus uh, Mr. Schwab, so total seven panelists on stage. If you look around, maybe we're a little bit biased towards LDP, Liberal Democratic Party, maybe, maybe not. At this table, uh, we have uh, Mr. Furukawa and Mr. Maihara. And as for the members here, uh, we are regulars at Davos meetings. So that's basically the basis for their selection for the panel. This session will last one hour. So for each panelist, well, we have all heard the speech by Mr. Hatoyama. And uh, given the theme this time, Japan's role in the global agenda, we would like to have each person speak for about three to five minutes uh, with their comments. And after we hear from all panelists, then we would like to open to the floor so that people in the audience can ask questions to the panelists. So we would like this to be as interactive as possible. So we ask for your kind cooperation. So um, Mr. Takenaka, could you um, start? Uh, Professor Takenaka. Thank you for this opportunity. I don't um, belong to any party or support any particular party. Mr. Hatoyama gave a wonderful speech. In 2001, he um, was uh, he, he spoke for the first time in, at Davos, and he spoke in English, and I was there, and I got this very fresh image of him, and I was reminded of that first speech he made at Davos back then. Now, as you know, uh, in the magazine Voice, um, he read, uh, his article was carried, and a lot of criticisms or opinions were uh, expressed, and I was thinking maybe his speech would be rather short. Uh, however, it was almost like um, declaration of his stance um, as um, the leader, the new leader, the policy speech, that, it, that is. And uh, reform was mentioned at the beginning, and also market was mentioned, and also the balance between market and regulation and uh, global market. Uh, I think um, that was rather encouraging. So hopefully he will stay realistic and also uh, strategic in policy uh, making. In discussing Japan's roles, I always am reminded of the Davos meeting in Tianjin uh, last year when Mr. Wen Jiabao came to talk about the role of China in the midst of the crisis that we see today worldwide. And uh, he said um, to run the Chinese economy well. That was the first priority, he said. And the same can be said about the Japanese economy now, for Japan to serve its role, um, in the earlier session, I mentioned this already, but I hope uh, Mr. Uh, Hatoyama will serve uh, like uh, Mr. Mitterrand of France. In 1981, uh, he led the first um, socialist um, administration in France, and uh, social welfare and socialism uh, was what he upholded upheld, but economy um, uh, failed or, or, or actually was very stagnant in one year, and the uh, fiscal situation got very worsened, and, um, and the society was suffering. And then he had a total turnaround. Um, in other words, uh, he switched to a more liberalized economy, and at the same time, from a socialist policy to uh, integration of e e Europe uh, was um, the new approach that he has taken. In other words, uh, domestic-centered to more globalized um, approach was the change he took. And um, in the, well, he, he was able to lead the country for 14 years as the president. And of course, elections, um, you have to get, win the votes, and so you have to play within the various limitations domestically. However, um, you know, we're <coughs> very much uh, in, 
uh, keen to see how, how Japan can do, but the contribution to the global agenda, I think it's important for Japan so that we can really suppress the um, protectionist uh, pressures within Japan. So hopefully the new government will take such measures and such policies. Now, the um, role of Japan in solving the global agenda items, I think uh, we have a big play, um, role to play, uh, something that cannot be uh, addressed within the given existing framework, such as uh, poverty issues, as well as the financial issue, as well as uh, the global environmental issues. Um, then Japan should um, make this um, into an opportunity for Japan to show um, its own stance. Of course, um, fiscally, we are in a very poor shape right now. And uh, we cannot use this uh, once in a century uh, recession as an excuse. So uh, we want to exit from this state in a very well, in a well managed manner. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, uh, Ms. Ogata, please. Yes, I am Ogata. This is the um, Japan community of Davos, and I am so grateful and uh, so happy that this um, uh, was um, possible. And, and that Mr. Um, Hatoyama said that um, the gap uh, among people is the bad side of globalization, and I see this as a very important issue. Now, in, well, I have some work um, in JICA right now, and JICA was integrated, um, yen loan uh, grants, and, um, and the technological transfer. So these are the three areas that uh, we are engaged in as a, a, a party to um, you know, put projects in place. And we have to have some slogans or objectives clarified. And we had some internal discussions about that. And one came, thing came out. Uh, and that was uh, inclusive and dynamic development. In other words, without gaps and with a lot of uh, dyna dynamism uh, in international development, why is it important for us to focus on the elimination of gaps? Well, globalization tends to lead to gaps. And from uh, those gaps, we see a lot of dif distortion and that has a social aspects to that as well as economic aspects. And uh, the 9-11 terrorism um, was also in a way related to this uh, globalization and the gap that was uh, the result of uh, globalization. So uh, in Japan, the gap among different um, groups in Japan is set to be the negative impact or inf um, result of um, globalization. Um, not just international, but um, inter in domestic uh, gaps we see um, is very much influenced by globalization internationally. So within the Japanese society, we need to really um, face this um, issue of gaps. And also internationally as well, uh, we want to have inclusive development to address this gap issue. So not just um, economic uh, assistance, but um, f infrastructure related assistance and so on. There can be so many things that we can do. And we uh, at JICA will uh, make our utmost effort in making contribution there. So a world without any gaps. Now why do we have that? Because um, globalization um, moves on so quickly, the information flow is so quick, and that leads to uh, quick generation of gaps, and that leads to um, grudges and negative feelings against other people, which is quite um, something that we should fear. So we have to think about the impact of these developments uh, on people, uh, both inside a country as well as um, in the inter international economy. So we have to think about our roles in that context. We, Japan, are the second largest economy still today, I think. So uh, we have to be aware of uh, the issues of uh, globalization and the distortion that um, can be caused. So both domestically and outside of the country, we need to think about that issue. Thank you. Thank you very much. So uh, Mr. Kurokawa, please. Professor Kurokawa. 
Yes, um, the world has come as one. We have a lot of uh, population, and uh, the temperature is rising. And I think uh, things, these issues are getting more o obvious, M maybe th that thanks to IT. However, when you travel abroad, you see this firsthand. You, you know, know that there are poverty issues, and until you see it for yourself, you don't really, really appreciate the importance of the issue. So I think in the past decade or so, uh, or 40 years, rather, uh, we have seen this um, change. In other words, we're living in a more flat world where people can talk with each other more um, easily. It's not government, it's not university, but um, we have this impartial fora uh, to uh, have dialogues, not for a particular objective uh, for talks sake. What, what impressed me most when I visited, um, uh, participated um, Davos for the first time, it, it was Mr. Simon Paris and Arafat, Mr. Arafat talking uh, together at the forum that I attended. So I was wondering, can we really um, set a, such a stage here in Japan? We are still the second largest economy of the world, and we have a new government coming in, and so we need to really send out the message. Uh, about how we want to really lead Japan economically and elsewhere. And we need to make um, commitment and um, serve our role as a global citizen. Uh, we want uh, the government to uh, really send out that message, and we want this um, fora uh, to have multi-stakeholders discuss m on many issues. So um, I think it's wonderful that we have this forum uh, in place in Japan, and as a catalyst, I hope this um, me, uh, this meeting will carry on. And um, in Japan, uh, we're the second largest economy, however, from different sectors. We have individuals and groups that really still do not have uh, the mindset of disseminating our positions, our messages. You know, are we sending out our messages? No. Um, you know, we are rather responsive that, rather than proactive. We are good at responding to what others say about us. However, initiation or, uh, you know, taking the initiative or initiating our messages is what we need to work on. How the world is um, moving and how can we really um, um, act in that. Well, there, there were 20 um, students that led to um, Bangladesh um, recently, and the Bangladesh, um, they didn't have um, baths bath tubs and that they had to wash their, uh, themselves in the river. And so for some of these students, it was a new experience. And I want more students to really experience something like that because that would trigger them to think about what they can do in this world today. Earlier, um, you know, US, uh, France, Japan, China, you know, we had PhD student um, gathering where um, you know they had this uh, eight-day camp together. Um, Seventy of students got together, and uh, so I, uh, you know, I want something, some activities like that across the borders. Um, we want more Japanese young people to really participate in such um, activities, and I think um, this type of forum uh, is one place to talk about such things, and also hopefully we can expand that. The benefit of um, Davos is that you can really. Um, actually respond to others' uh, comments. Well, what about your response to the comments by Mr. Hatoyama? Do you have any comments? Well, yes, we're the second largest economy, and uh, the uh, so the policy. Uh, Politi politicians in that country has to think about a global context. The role of Japan in the international arena is something that he has to bear in mind. Thank you. Um, Ms. Kawaguchi, please. Earlier, um, the panelist was said to be a little biased towards the LDP, but I am the, uh, or one of the members of LDP, that's for sure. I am the only one, so I, would like to um, you to excuse me when I say some provocative things, um, rather partisan. Um, I listened to this wonderful speech by Mr. Hatoyama, but when I was listening to him, I thought that, well, what is the difference between an LDP leader speaking at this venue and uh, what Mr. Hatoyama was saying? Because what he said, Mr. Hatoyama said, was exactly what um, LDP leaders would have said in the past, and it's a continuation, basically. But if when you are more careful, 
in listening to him, there were two or three things that um, an LDP leader would have emphasized more, and that Mr. Hatoyama really not uh, did not mention them. So and there are many, but I would like just mention two. One is for um, J Japan to make a contribution to peace and security of the world. Ima. And in the uh, Indian, o Indian Ocean and Afghanistan are uh, two major issues we are confronting. And uh, for Afghanistan, the self-defense forces of Japan are in the Indian Ocean. But this law that permits them to do that uh, will come to uh, expi expiry, ex expiry next January. And uh, of Somalia, uh, maritime self-defense forces of uh, Japan are working together with the other uh, countries' uh, warships protecting the uh, commercial vessels uh, uh, of uh, Somalia. Uh, so what are going, uh, is uh, DPJ going to do about this? When uh, these uh, two bills uh, were submitted to the Diet, the DPJ opposed uh, the uh, bills. Uh, with respect to the vessel uh, of uh, Indian Ocean, uh, the uh, expiry is uh, uh, scheduled to be in January. So they, I believe uh, uh, what they're saying is uh, they're allowing it to continue until January, but uh, also uh, they are talking about a possible uh, coalition government with uh, uh, social democrats of Japan and uh, the uh, socialists are saying they should be withdrawn. As for the operations of Somalia, uh, it shouldn't be the uh, self defense forces, but uh, the uh, Japan Coast Guard should uh, be involved, uh, although the, uh, all the other countries are sending war vessels there. So with respect to Japan's contribution to the international community uh, or the issue of uh, uh, eliminating disparity in the world or uh, the issue of uh, uh, enhancing the uh, uh, growth or income of the uh, people in the world. They are all based upon uh, the uh, peace. And now, w without uh, Japan's uh, contribution in the field of uh, uh, peace, uh, I don't think uh, uh, Japan will uh, per uh, be permitted to uh, make a contribution. Um, so uh, what is their idea and uh, how uh, is uh, uh, things going to be uh, uh, proceeded? Unfortunately, uh, President Hatoyama did not mention uh, these uh, points and think uh, this is uh, rather regrettable. Secondly, as was mentioned in the previous session, contribution, contribution uh, must be something uh, open, something inclusive in Asia, I think uh, to date, uh, Japan has made its contribution, uh, assistance, uh, cooperation uh, for establishment of infrastructure. And uh, uh, JICA, uh, Ms. Ogata's organization, has played a central role there. But uh, Asia and the rest of the world are connected. With respect to Asian community or Asian currency, if you try to separate Asia from the uh, rest of the world, it is impossible. Uh, it is unrealizable. Uh, I don't think uh, if you have such an idea, uh, cooperation will not proceed smoothly. With respect to global issues, uh, we have, for example, uh, an issue of uh, global warming. And uh, the global warming included, uh, trade included, uh, the uh, financial cooperation included everything. Now, in everything, Asia is important, but uh, we have to look at all these issues from a global perspective. So the balance between Asia and the uh, globality. Uh, now, uh, Mr. Hatoyama wrote an article. Uh, well, without uh, Mr. Hatoyama's knowledge, uh, he said, uh, but uh, Asian centricity and uh, Globality. Uh, I think. Uh, I think uh, his stance uh, about uh, this balance is uh, a bit different from uh, leader of uh, LDP uh, stance. So uh, I think uh, uh, now uh, this issue of between uh, Asia and the globality is very important. At any rate. Mr. Hatem only talked about uh, the principles. I have been involved in the government uh, and based upon that uh, experience and also uh, experience of serving uh, in the uh, cabinet, uh, uh, the, the devil uh, resides in details. The, uh, uh, the details are important. For, uh, 
Well, uh, there are bright aspects and uh, the darker aspects uh, in terms of globality uh, and growth, and uh, how to hit the, the best balance is uh, going to be a challenge for the uh, DPJ uh, because uh, DPJ is going to be in the administration, but uh, it would be, of course, an issue that uh, the LDP would fa uh, face uh, if uh, the LDP were in the government. But uh, And, of course, uh, I share uh, uh, in saying that uh, uh, this is an issue, but uh, the, the uh, issue is in the details. And so how he is going to work on the details is something that uh, I would like to continue to watch. Uh, I think uh, uh, we have to go uh, in the right direction, and I sincerely hope that uh, the policy will go in the right direction. We would like to provide our assistance and would like to provide our own views so that that will happen, and I think that is very important. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Kawaguchi, uh, you talked about uh, the uh, peace and security. Now, according to my uh, notes, uh, Mr. Uh, Hatoyama said, uh, uh, peace and prosperity. So I uh, did some editing of uh, your statement. Mr. Uh, uh, Hasegawa, uh, now, uh, am I uh, belonging to the uh, LDP camp or not? Uh, I actually uh, shouldn't ask uh, this question to myself. Now, uh, Mr. Hatoyama, the uh, uh, next uh, uh, well, uh, he, the uh, president of the uh, party, uh, his key word uh, is uh, uh, the uh, contribution to the uh, world peace. Now, I would like to touch upon that, uh, without, uh, whether you like it or not. Uh, all the countries are uh, now uh, facing the uh, waves of globalization. CSIS memorandum uh, was written by Dr. Hamre, and I would like uh, to quote uh, some parts uh, from this uh, uh, recent uh, article. Now, with respect to global agenda, uh, everything uh, is uh, affecting uh, all the things in the world horizontally, whether it's uh, a financial crisis, uh, global warming or pandemic, or perhaps terrorism. On one hand, The uh, basic organizations that are trying to resolve these are the uh, governments of countries, but uh, that is not sufficient. So there are uh, two approaches that uh, uh, try to be done internationally. Uh, that is, one of them is a uh, uh, structure approach. Uh, the UN, uh, WTO, WHO, international, uh, well, the uh, multilateral banks and so on are trying to pursue this approach. The other is a consensus uh, internationalism, uh, as he calls it rather than structure, but uh, well, uh, well, there was a shift from G7 to G8 to now G20. Uh, so uh, there are these two types of approaches. With respect to the structure approach, originally, uh, well, after World War II, the uh, United Nations uh, was organized centering around the uh, winners in World War II. So the uh, structure uh, is quite different from the structure that we should uh, pursue. Uh, the uh, efficiency is uh, coming down. Uh, on the other hand, with respect to the consensus internationalism, it is true that it is more efficient, uh, but according to him, uncertain legitimacy, that's what he says. The decision-making uh, authority or the, uh, 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 there is no uh, norm or power to uh, set uh, international standards. Now, I think uh, the area where Japan can make a good contribution is just so happened that, uh, well, there is a, a Democratic Party in the U.S. and uh, there is also uh, the uh, DPJ it caused a change in both Japan and the United States. Now, historically, um, to internationalism, uh, well, uh, w we now have a president in the United States who uh, embarks upon uh, internationalism. Well, uh, President Hatoyama says uh, uh, the uh, Japan and the U.S. Uh, should be on uh, equal footing, and I shouldn't say anything about it, but uh, Japan should strengthen its uh, strong ties with the United States. And from there, uh, well, with respect to G20, uh, uh, how to uh, tackle the issues uh, the even the G20 cannot tackle. Uh, how uh, is he going to establish such a, a G20 norm or international norm? I think is a very important issue. Another point I would like to mention is we are proud of uh, technology here in Japan, and Japanese people are proud of uh, the products they produce. 
And uh, in that area, we can make a contribution, uh, but uh, the fundamental problems with respect to the eradication of poverty, Japan can uh, make an even greater contribution. Now, for example, uh, assistance in the field of agriculture or uh, water purification. In these fields, uh, we have the latest uh, cutting edge technology. One of the basic uh, issues of Japan is we have excellent technologies, excellent human resources, but we can't put them together and communicate uh, to the rest of the world what uh, we can do. We are very poor at that. Now, in comparison, actually, I was talking to uh, uh, Ms. Ogata in the uh, uh, ante room, and uh, the Japanese government is not, uh, pol uh, politicians are not really serious in uh, providing good English education to the Japanese people. Uh, well, uh, we are uh, not a good speaker of English, and uh, because of that, uh, uh, we have a handicap of uh, communicating what we can do to the rest of the world. Uh, this is a big issue. So both the uh, government and the um, bureaucrats should uh, uh, ring our uh, brain and think about how we can uh, eradicate poverty, how we can uh, contribute to the international community. Thank you. Now I would like to open the floor at this moment. Uh, yes, comment, please. Uh, this is an interactive session, yes. Yes, uh, about uh, two points I would like to uh, base my uh, two comments based on what's been said. Uh, Ms. Kawaguchi made strong comments. So once again, uh, as I listened to what uh, Ms. Kawaguchi had said, say, I thought uh, uh, LDP is going to be a formidable force. Uh, it's formidable, but uh, uh, who they're going to say uh, constructive comments. So uh, th I think uh, I would like to uh, root uh, for both LDP and DPJ. Now on this point, I used to be with the government and uh, strategy is always uh, at uh, the uh, details. Now uh, when uh, bureaucrats uh, uh, will find fault uh, with in the uh, small uh, well, uh, language or the uh, uh, words, uh, the, they can uh, control everything. So uh, now we have to think about the details. Now at the same time, of course, uh, uh, we have to move away from bureaucrats. That is correct. But uh, bureaucrats uh, are uh, equal to a tribe, uh, what are called uh, tribal um, the uh, lawmakers. So the DPD has to contend with uh, uh, infighting. Uh, in, for example, in addressing the uh, farming issues, uh, there's going to be a strong opposition from uh, uh, farm lobbyists, and uh, uh, there are many uh, tribal uh, lawmakers uh, uh, within RDP, and uh, there's going to be an increasing number of uh, uh, tribal uh, lawmakers, and that's uh, a big concern for me. Just like the RDP, uh, well, if they they say they're not going to establish any committee for general affairs and so on, like LDP, but, uh, well, I think uh, uh, I would like to uh, ask for comments from the floor on this issue. The, an another point about the uh, Japan's role. Uh, Dr. Schwab says, uh, uh, Marta, the importance of uh, the roles of multi-stakeholders, this is uh, very important. The issues cannot be addressed by the government alone, not by international organizations alone. Uh, the uh, role of uh, businesses are important, but uh, not uh, business alone cannot uh, solve these. Each and every citizen has to participate in the resolution. This is a major issue. I think, uh, um, well, uh, we have to try to address this issue. Uh, we just have to uh, well, uh, aim at uh, our uh, arrow at uh, the issue, uh, whether we will be successful or not. Well, uh, we have uh, uh, more resources than th you think we have uh, in terms of technology, people, uh, uh, money, and uh, all these people are multi-stakeholders, and we have to do something about it, try to do something about it. And uh, uh, this kind of a World Economic Forum uh, would uh, provide us with uh, uh, hints, and uh, international decision-making uh, is based upon uh, multilateralism. This is uh, very important. International cooperation is important, but in reality, uh, the uh, not uh, multilateralism, but uh, Unilateralism has run the world uh, in many cases. In 1933, there was a London uh, conference and uh, there was a move away from a gold standard. And many people tried to protect a gold standard, but the US said no. One country, uh, unilateralism, said no. And, uh, and there was a, uh, well, uh, 
uh, integration to this uh, uh, good policy. Now, the uh, financial uh, measures, it wasn't decided by the uh, G7, but uh, uh, everybody followed a good policy. So one person, if one person says uh, this is a good policy, uh, that's going to be uh, playing a very important role. So, so this kind of a forum of, for uh, multi-stakeholders is going to be an arena for uh, sharing uh, good policies. Yes, please. Uh, you, you are not uh, in a position to say no. I listened uh, uh, with great interest to uh, what the Mr. Takenaka had to say. The tribal um, policymakers or the policymakers that uh, cater to the needs of interest groups. The question is how to really uh, give more power or empower um, politicians. Uh, how can we really uh, foster politicians that have uh, the basic um, capabilities and traits? Well, when you look at the historic um, uh, situation in Japan, you know, the knowledge and information resided in the bureau bureaucracy, and uh, that would be the same even after L uh, DPJ um, becomes the ruling party. And of course, the uh, political environment needs to be improved, but for in a longer term, you need to empower politicians, and in order to do that, the staff supporting the politicians think tanks in the political arena need to be increased in number. Um, with regard to uh, legislation, uh, there are only three um, assistance that the government uh, supports and uh, pol policy assistance, only one. And, uh, you know, uh, secretaries, uh, the old timer gets the highest salary and uh, becomes the um, policy advisor to the politician. That's the reality. So under such a system, I don't think it would be easy to really uh, have a good politician with good capabilities. And LDP established a think tank about two, three years ago. However, it's not really fully functioning. So the information uh, within the ministries have to be disclosed. And in order to do that, in a longer term, you know, I don't think uh, we can have like 30 or more um, staff supporting one politician like the United States. H however, still, we need to do something here in Japan to improve and increase the number of uh, assistants. Otherwise, politicians taking control structurally would not be possible. OK, please. Uh, Mr. Schwab wants to talk as well, so. Well, it's still today, maybe, uh, we are still in power, oh, well, LDP is still in power. Well, Ms. Kawaguchi was in the um, LDP, and I was, I'm very um, surprised uh, that to hear that from her. Uh, Mr. Gerald uh, Curtis, sitting there, came to Kedan Ren to talk about um, his views, and uh, he talked about how many uh, policy assistants uh, the um, congressmen in the United States have and so forth. These are well-known facts. Um, so you have been in power for half a century, and uh, you know what you were supposed to do, and you didn't do it. So I think that's really showing the root of the problem that we have here in Japan. You know the essence, the reasons why we have this problem, and you have not been able to um, address that. And that's why LDP lost power this time, lost in the election. So I know that you <laughs> are aware of the problem. You say you have to do it. Why not do it? And so this is something that I ask of the politicians in general. Well, I'm sure that um, you have uh, counter comments, but this is supposedly an impartial fora. So why not um, receive as many questions from the floor as possible? But uh, Dr. Schwab, you, you um, have the floor first and then open to questions from the floor. Politics to the global agenda. Uh, but uh, let me first uh, make a remark, I think, which is essential. We are running out of time. We don't have a long uh, period which is still available to bring our house in order. And I just would like to, to um, mention a study which uh, was done by uh, the U.S. National Intelligence Council and was uh, published eight years ago seven or eight years ago, 
with uh, a number of scenarii for the world. And um, one of the, actually only three or four, one of the scenario, the uh, scenario was a war situation, particularly a war between the West and Islam at that time. A second scenario was the, um, a chaos scenario, which means we are overwhelmed on a global level by all the challenges we have to deal with. And we stumble from one crisis management into the other one. And of course, every crisis management needs more financial and human resources. And at the end, we lose control. And the third scenario is the Davos scenario, as it was called. And you can imagine I read it with great pleasure. Uh, the Davos scenario is the scenario of a global consensus, that we act together. And we act together in a spirit where we ask ourselves, what can we contribute in order to solve global issues? And not so much, what can we get out of the global system? And if I look at the global agenda, I think it's characterized by three elements. It's increasing speed of change. And uh, so there's a book coming out uh, which shows that we have to digest as much change now in a decade as it was in a century. And this creates completely new parameters for global and of course also for business decision making. So the second one is the complexity. Let's just imagine, um, or let, me, let me share with you that the World Economic Forum has done an exercise to define uh, global issues, global challenges. And we said a global challenge is an issue on the global agenda, which if not resolved, will threaten the whole humankind. If it's resolved, it needs the cooperation of all countries and all stakeholders involved. Now, we, we uh, came up to 68 different challenges. Um, so the, it's the increasing speed, it is the increasing uh, complexity, and of course we are all aware of the increased uh, global interdependence. Now, what uh, I spoke before when I had the, the uh, pleasure to, to introduce uh, Hato Yamasan, I spoke about our Global Redesign Initiative. Uh, the forum, with the help of many of you um, in our Global Agenda Councils, we are trying to put this all together and to have as many proposals and ideas how we could manage our global affairs in a systemic, proactive, comprehensive way. And uh, here, um, when I had uh, a private discussion with um, Mr. Hato Yamasan, uh, I, I um, offered that um, Jap or I proposed that Japan should be particularly integrated into this uh, initiative. And uh, Japan, as it has been said, can contribute a lot in many areas. I think you should not forget that Japan is probably in terms of societal structure and technology, the most advanced uh, country in the world, uh, energy technology and so on. So instead of complaining about all uh, what is not, I think um, when I was teaching strategy, I always said you look at your weaknesses and at your strengths. And there is some research out that those who concentrate on strengths will succeed. Those who concentrate too much on uh, weaknesses will fail. So I think this is, a, as a, someone who has been so many times in Japan, I, my advice would be, why not to concentrate much more on your strengths, um, inclusive the economy. Um, a final remark uh, concerning uh, the speech um, I, as a representative of the international community, I, I would say the speech uh, of uh, Hato Yamasan, um, I think dispelled some of the concerns, particularly the international community had. And uh, I think it was very important to get this out of the way 
the force of new government comes into uh, into play. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, so there are no floor. Uh, Thank you very much. So we would like to entertain questions from the floor. Please identify yourself and also who you're directing your question to or addressing your question to. And also, please limit your question to one minute or less. So one minute rule, please follow that rule. So anybody with any questions, please raise your hand. Um, Ambassador Frieden, no. Mr. Feldman. I am from Morgan Stanley, I am Feldman. I have um, some questions. Politicians, when you look around the world, which country's um, el uh, election system do you think, like Mr. Schwab said, uh, has an in international perspective in making decisions? Do you see any country that does that? And uh, if so, uh, what sort of system do you think is optimum? Uh, there's no um, political scientists here. What about in the audience, political scientist? Yes, Mr. Curtis, Professor Curtis, you are there. But this is unfair to put you on a spot. This is a question to the panel. So I think the answer is no, um, is I, Mr. Feldman's view, but oh, sh sorry, um, <laughs> Dr. Schwab, you, you are a political scientist. I understood the question correctly. Which country is best prepared to deal with this new environment? I, I think we have to say China on the one hand, uh, and uh, this raises, of course, a number of issues. Um, and I think it was, uh, the question came up uh, before, um, in a democracy, it's much more difficult to deal with those issues because uh, you have to respond, uh, you have to respond uh, to your voters uh, every four years. And um, unfortunately, I mentioned the increased complexity. Um, I have to say, I am overwhelmed by the complexity. So how can, and my whole life is to deal with this uh, complexity. How can we expect from the voters that he understands the complexity and all the issues involved? So it's very easy to, to, to um, in a world where sometimes you have to make short-term satisfactions to solve a long-term problem, it's very easy to stimulate a kind of uh, public revolt against uh, a government uh, in power. Um, I would add the other government which is very well prepared or relatively good prepared, well prepared, is the United States. Because the United States, as you know, uh, has many excellent think tanks uh, which we must miss in many other parts of the world. So those two countries, I would say, um, are probably the best in terms of intellectual uh, capabilities, the best prepared to, to, to deal with the different issues. And if we look at uh, China and its policy related to um, securing its resource base um, in energy and other raw materials, I think even agriculture, I think this is an expression of a very uh, long-term thinking of the Chinese government. But I think, I think this shouldn't discourage us who come from, from um, let's say, countries with a very strong uh, democratic tr uh, tradition. Uh, I think uh, we, should, we should pay more attention as politicians to explain to the voters the long-term uh, stakes which are involved. And um, also we should provide our voters with a more systemic view and not concentrate always on very little issues which just happen to be of public concern at a particular moment. I know it's difficult with our media and we can now blame the media, uh, but uh, this would open a whole uh, other discussion. Thank you very much, Mr. Mitachi and Mr. Egawa. Next. I am Mitachi, thank you. Uh, Professor Takenaka, I have a question to you. 
earlier, uh, you mentioned Mr. Wen Jiabao of China, and uh, you said that Japan has to do the same as China. So uh, we have to put ourselves back on its uh, growth track. However, we're not back on our feet yet, and we have to therefore um, bring ourselves back to that good track for um, positive growth. So maybe I should ask this to Mr. Maihara of DPJ as well. But you know. When you look at the manifesto, a lot of people say that uh, DPJ doesn't have a growth strategy. But uh, if a government changes, then there will there be beautiful um, policies coming out of METI or other um, agencies? No, it's not as easy as that. Uh, it would be uh, full of trade-offs. Um, so where do we see trade um, strategy for growth? Well. You know, it's not just a matter of saying biotechnology or the environmental technology, but I think it's a matter of making the right process in place. And growth strategy is said to be missing, but I think the problem lies in the process. So in other words, the question we should really think about is what sort of process should we establish? And only with the process in place, we can then move forward. Thank you. Yes, please. Um, yes, Mr. Maihara, I would like you to respond as well. Um, but in a way, something like a, a national strategic um, bureau uh, being developed, I think, as a process, is the right thing to do. But the question is the details or the contents. Um, for instance, the Economic um, and fi Fiscal Advisory um, Committee, uh, it went well sometimes and it did not go well sometimes. So the um, committee, the structure, is of course important, but um, people's will and uh, also capability is also important, the content, that is. For growth strategy, um, I think um, the responsibility of the economists in Japan is so huge because there are many economists in Japan that are irresponsible in making their comments. I don't say who, but so it's not so easy to grow the economy. The uh, basic rule is GDP is an output. In other words, you have to increase input in order to increase output. In order to increase input, you have to invest uh, invest, uh, invest in um, m money and labor. For instance, uh, capital means uh, you need to reduce tax, um, corporate tax and um, uh, other kinds of income tax and so forth. And uh, we were not able to do that. Uh, we were not able to reduce the uh, corporate tax, uh, were, um, corporate income tax. Um, Sweden is said to be um, one of the uh, advanced countries that has the lowest um, income tax for companies. So uh, we have to think about that. We have to and about the uh, uh, growth, uh, uh, it's a 500 trillion yen economy, and uh, it's impossible uh, to have just uh, uh, one or uh, two industries to uh, to see growth. So, uh, if you want to do input, uh, uh, you have to think about the uh, good uh, resources allocation. For that, uh, uh, deregulation is necessary. To uh, to do deregulation. Well, uh, no uh, party is had any manifestos uh, increasing the. Uh, uh, the uh, deregulation. So uh, I think uh, uh, this is uh, a serious uh, uh, tilt, I would say. Now, of course, uh, growth uh, fields uh, are there, and uh, all these uh, fields are regulated. So because they are regulated, demand, uh, there's a, potential, a lot of uh, potential demand, but uh, uh, they're not a full-scale demand. And uh, well, that includes a medical field, uh, the uh, uh, broadcast, uh, the uh, telecom, uh, the uh, broad <coughs> education. Uh, there has to be deregulation. And also, uh, initially, uh, there should be perhaps uh, support in terms of capital. I think that kind of a mechanism is necessary. Thank you. Now, uh, Mr. Maihara, please. Uh, Maihara from uh, DPJ, thank you very much uh, for giving me the floor. Uh, this is not a question. Uh, I'd like to give you my response to a question, and I have to also offer my rebuttal to uh, uh, Ms. Kawaguchi, so uh, allow me to say a few, a few things. Now, uh, growth industries, about growth industries, it is true that uh, uh, the LDP government, particularly uh, uh, Mr. Takenaka, uh, worked on some fields, uh, and I don't deny the effort. I think all these efforts are very important. At the same time, uh, different uh, viewpoints are necessary. The uh, healthcare, nurse, uh, nursery care, uh, I think uh, these areas are growth areas. And also uh, the um, 
the, the decline in uh, agriculture and uh, fishing. Uh, well, these areas should be turned into uh, growth uh, fields. The population uh, is uh, declining in Japan, but the global population is increasing. So uh, we have to increase the uh, food self-sufficiency rate in Japan. For us to survive, I believe uh, this is a very serious and very important issue. Uh, so in this regard, I think uh, uh, these fields uh, need to be turned into uh, growth uh, industries. And to do this, what uh, should we do? I think we need wisdom. Now, in the uh, campaign this time, what uh, struck me was uh, uh, well, uh, Jason uh, uh, criticized uh, Japan US FTA, and uh, uh, it was struck in two uh, counts. Uh, FTA and WTO are different. FTA uh, is about uh, uh, two countries, two countries uh, negotiating with each other. So, uh, well, it won't be achieved if it is uh, against uh, Japan. So, of course, negotiation would be very severe, but uh, based upon where we are, negotiations take place. Why uh, are they making fuss about it? And the way we, uh, things are, uh, are we going to be bored in this uh, uh, water that is ever getting hotter? Uh, then uh, are we going to support the uh, LDP's policy uh, about agriculture? This was a major um, question on my part. And uh, uh, I'm sorry I'm spending a lot of time, but uh, if I may offer my rebuttal to Ms. Kawaguchi. Now, number one about uh, Mr. Hatoyama's uh, uh, article. Uh, of course, uh, uh, frankly speaking, uh, things that shouldn't be mentioned are mentioned there. For example, a uh, common uh, Asian currency. Uh, you may be thinking about in your mind, but this shouldn't be mentioned. Well, I'm not uh, in a position to uh, say that, but uh, uh, I uh, mentioned uh, China is a threat. Uh, I said this in China, and I was criticized. Uh, even though you uh, think about those, uh, there are things that you can mention and you cannot mention. So uh, I think uh, there, are some, there are some uh, matters that uh, you uh, shouldn't mention, uh, even though you believe so. About this. Uh, uh, common uh, Asian currency, this is a future issue, and still the do US dollar is a key currency, so uh, we shouldn't have uh, uh, perhaps uh, criticized what uh, the US is doing. Now, with respect to uh, Somalia or uh, the uh, activities in the Indian Ocean, about the Indian Ocean, we're going to stop it, but uh, our alternative measure uh, are going to be considered on the part of government. Uh, with respect to Somalia, uh, well, of course, uh, uh, the uh, Coast Guard is, uh, well, perhaps I should be there, but uh, we're not against uh, the maritime safety forces. And uh, uh, we are, were against it uh, because there was no uh, approval by the Diet. So, uh, so uh, it's not that uh, the DPJ is against international uh, uh, cooperation or contribution. Thank you. Now, uh, Egawa-san, uh, well, I think uh, this is going to be the last comment from the four, so you have to be good. Uh, Masako Egawa from Tokyo University, thank you very much for giving me the floor. Now, uh, I would like to ask a question to Ms. Kawaguchi. Earlier on, uh, globalization must be open, and I think uh, I agree with you, but, uh, uh, well, of course, we have to place importance on our relationship with our neighboring countries in Asia. My concern is that in the case of Japan, uh, Korea, China, Korea, the uh, uh, Russia, these are uh, countries that are located close uh, to us, and but we still have uh, uh, territorial issues with these countries, which is uh, the uh, history issue is still a, a thorn uh, for us, and so uh, in many ways, uh, these issues are narrowing uh, our, our alternatives. Now, I visited Berlin last year, and close to uh, the, uh, uh, the gate of uh, Brandenburg, uh, there was a, a, a monument of a Holocaust that was communicating uh, important message to uh, the uh, people in the world. And we would like to send a uh, similar message to the rest of the world. Now, my question. For globalization, uh, the relationship with our neighbors in Asia are, are very important. What's your response to that? I fully agree with you. Relationship with uh, the rest of Asia is important. And uh, particularly uh, between Japan and China, according to uh, polls, uh, 60 and 70 percent of the population are not in favor of uh, each other. So that has to be changed. Uh, it's not good for uh, Asia. It's not good for Japan. It's not good for the international community unless we change it. So oh, I'm not saying uh, we should treat uh, the rest of Asia uh, just like the rest of the world. Asia is important. 
and uh, uh, there have been many frameworks that have been created in Asia. So the uh, uh, assistance of Japan, well, the number is uh, a bit changed uh, more uh, going to Africa, but at a certain point in time, uh, 70 or 80 percent of uh, Japanese assistance went to Asia. So the two do not uh, uh, contradict with each other, but uh, I'm saying we have to be open. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Ogata uh, would like to s make some comments, please. Uh, many points have been uh, pointed out. Uh, I listened to them with great interest. Now, in this session, uh, we have been talking about Japan's role in the global agenda. However, uh, global agenda on this point, uh, no comments have been made. And I hate to say this, but uh, uh, the RDP or uh, uh, DPJ in the uh, process of creating manifestos, uh, along with the global agenda, uh, have they uh, talked about reform of Japan? No. Uh, so uh, I thought uh, uh, something better should be done. Uh, now, going forward, Well, the uh, leaders have to say that uh, we are aware of the uh, global agenda issue and what uh, is to be done in Japan when you make a decision, for example, a nursing care, you have to look at the global agenda in thinking about nursing care because we have the issue of population uh, and also uh, the immigration issue. Uh, but uh, we have to have uh, more immigrants, otherwise uh, many things cannot be done. So these issues have to be sorted out. So in uh, formulating policies, global agenda needs to be uh, kept in your mind as we consider what to do. And uh, I think uh, Davos is of uh, great help to us uh, in this regard. It just so happened that Ms. Kawaguchi uh, well, uh, mentioned uh, uh, something about Afghanistan. Now in Afghanistan, for many years, Japan has done a lot. And uh, the Japanese people do not uh, know this because they forget. And uh, just this uh, last uh, uh, spring, um, the U.S. Uh, was going to uh, place importance on Afghanistan, so I was asked by the U uh, government, and I went there. Now, so uh, the U.S. is not saying do this or that. Uh, they say uh, they want Japan to uh, contribute where Japan is good at. Uh, this is a serious issue. Now, uh, we are engaged in the, the assistance for development. Uh, we are actually engaged in the uh, development of agriculture in Afghanistan. And this has to be expanded. The U.S. is uh, wishing for that to do that, and uh, uh, they are appreciating efforts. But uh, uh, that alone uh, would not uh, suffice. So what can you do, and uh, what uh, is it that uh, the international community is uh, calling for? Uh, you have to think about it and uh, through conversation and you have to identify what is uh, accorded on, on, uh, on you to do. You have to have a dialogue, we have to converse, uh, do conversation and decide. Uh, we have uh, Mr. Maihara from DPJ and uh, it's not uh, a world any longer where Japan uh, should uh, uh, do uh, th things that are good only for Japan. Of course, I know that uh, there are mountains of things that uh, we need to do in Japan, but uh, uh, Japan has uh, uh, global implications, and uh, we have to spread this awareness to uh, the uh, all the uh, Japanese people in the world uh, in Japan. Uh, three or four people are still raising their hands. I know this. Uh, and I feel it is uh, regrettable, but this, I think, sense of regret is good. And uh, in this session, uh, the atmosphere of Davos, uh, I think uh, you felt uh, the uh, atmosphere of Davos. Uh, we uh, criticized each other much, and I think uh, there were a lot of uh, con uh, constructive uh, uh, comments that were made, and I agree with uh, uh, Ms. Ogata when uh, she said what she said at the end. With that, I would like to close this session. Thank you.